I'm a madman. I'm a lunatic, bad man, poison the water in your community. My, My name, name is, is Kefka, Kefka, and I'll wreck ya. Pause for the break, after which I'll disrespect ya. What is up, my witches, wizards, and warlocks? Dev from the place down there, and it is Halloween, my favorite time of the year by a million. Halloween is easily the best holiday ever. Shut up if you think any other holiday is awesome, because this, the Halloween is it. Yay, Halloween. That means that we get to do a theme deck, a zombie deck for standard. Somebody finally did it, right? This is something we've gotten requests for in the past, but since it's Halloween, I, I couldn't resist. Could not resist the, the idea of a zombie deck, and turns out it's actually kind of good, so let's check it out. Before you ask why I'm not dressed as anything for Halloween, I am. I am Seth Rogen. We're playing 31 creatures in our zombie deck. Here's the catch. Ten of them aren't zombies, you know, but we need a supporting cast. We are playing still over 20 zombies, which is definitely enough to make Risen Executioner important. So don't, don't worry about Risen Executioner. He's there. And this card actually supports Risen Executioner, our first non-zombie. Three copies of Blood Soap Champion. Very, very important for the synergy of the deck. He's not going to be in the graveyard very, very often, and that, that helps you play Risen Executioner out of the graveyard for cheaper. And we're, we got a couple other tricks up our sleeve with Blood Soap Champion, yes, but we really need recruiting creatures like this. I, he feels like an honorary zombie to me anyway. Here's a zombie. Four copies of Shambling Goblin, which is a much better one drop than I ever thought it would be. You know, I started off with just two copies of Shambling Goblin in the deck, but it proved to be very, very important. It can often take out their two drop and help us get a little bit later in the game if that's what we needed to do, you know, and it really keeps them from swinging in early game, especially if they're playing with a lot of one toughness creatures, because you can two for one them sometimes. It's not very often, but it'll at least keep them from swinging. And it's sometimes combat math that gets skipped over, you know. You'll chump block a big guy with your Shambling Goblin, and then help, when he dies, finish off something that one of your other creatures is blocking. Although, blocking is a bit of a problem for the deck. We are playing three creatures that cannot block. So, this helps us block, you know. If nothing else, it's a chump blocker that can sometimes take out two things if they don't see the math the right way. So, Shambling Goblin has been pretty darn good to, to me, honestly. Another non-zombie real quick. There's three copies of Despoiler of Souls in the deck. It also feels like an honorary zombie right here, right? This is important, again, because of Risen Executioner. We're trying to keep creatures out of our graveyard so that we can play Risen Executioner for as cheap as possible at all points in the game, right? Out of our graveyard. So, even though Risen Executioner doesn't buff this, Risen Executioner is really the only thing in the deck that benefits us playing zombies at all, you know? It's just other than that, we just play a bunch of zombies. Um, so it's not that important that we play a ton of them, and this card and Bloodsoak Champion support Risen Executioner really, really well. Again, it cannot block, and neither can Risen Executioner, and neither can Bloodsoak Champion. So we're trying to be a little aggressive here, and Despoiler of Souls actually helps us out with that. You know, second turn, three power guy is really good against decks that are low on creatures, control especially, you know, and this keeps coming back. Even if they counter your dudes or remove your dudes, it can keep coming back, and that's a nightmare for some decks. So the card is very good, and I think just because of its odd synergy with um, Risen Executioner, it's worth including. Here's a zombie. Four copies of Soul Tie Emissary here, which has, again, been really good. It sucks, you know, it's a two-mana uh, 1-1 one, one guy, you know. That sucks. But you're sort of getting three power out of this. You just have to, it's a replacement effect. You have to wait for it to die. And in this deck, it will probably die. Either by chump blocking or being sacrificed in a Tuco Husk or something like that. It will more than likely die, and there's plenty of things that we wouldn't mind flipping over after Manifest. So, Soul Tie Emissary, always good. Yet another card that helps us get into the mid-game where we're a little bit more comfortable and can do some tricks. Our last non-zombie creature here, and I'll pair it with a zombie just to make you feel better. Four copies of Zulaport Cutthroat over here, and two copies of Nantuko Husk. Now you kind of see what we're doing. It's sort of Aristocrat's Light in this deck, and Zulaport Cutthroat forms an awesome engine when car with cards like Bloodsoak Champion, Despoiler of Souls, Risen Executioner that keep coming back, dying, coming back, dying, you know. There are turns where you can set up some really interesting sort of inevitability engines. If you have a Husk out and a Zulaport Cutthroat, then any of these other creatures that you can bring back from the graveyard easily, you're actually guaranteed to do a damage or two every single turn, you know? And I know that Despoiler's resources will run out eventually, but in that case, you'll be able to play Risen Executioner more easily. So the deck has a lot of little synergies in it, and Zulaport Cutthroat is kind of a key piece in the deck because your dudes are going to be dying a lot. Some of them are designed to die. We just saw Soltai Emissary, so, I mean, and we're coming up on a card here that exploits creatures, and, and another one later that exploits creatures. 
creatures. So our creatures are going to be dying, and Tulipor Cutler capitalizes on that very well. I don't have to explain the Huss. Not only is he a zombie, so he goes in here, but he pairs up well with creatures that can come back very easily, like every creature we've mentioned except for Sultai Emissary. And he's just an absolute stinking beast in this format, and goes really well with Cutthroat, obviously. You know, It's like if we play Huss, we sort of... We really sort of should play Cutthroat. <laughs> Four copies of Fleshbag Marauder, the thing I said exploits creatures, and we got yet another thing. You probably guessed what it is. But anyway, Fleshbag Marauder, really insanely good in this format already. You know, we see a lot of cards like um, Silungar, the Drifting Death, or Jutai, you know, just hexproof creatures that we can't otherwise deal with. And it's sort of why Crackling Doom is a good card in this format, and it totally is. And... For what it's worth, it's a three power guy for three mana, and usually you're going to be exploring a Despoiler or a Blood Soak Champion or something that can come back easily. Fleshbag Marauder is an all star in the deck. Removal is good. Four copies of the Kingpin right here. Risen Executioner, the most important card in the deck, the only reason to build zombies, honestly. Risen Executioner is absolutely nuts. So the boost is really, really important, but just as important is the ability to bring back a four power guy, no matter what removal they use, as long as that removal doesn't exile it, right? Um, but, I mean, they can counter it all they want to. You you will be bringing it back, you know? And we've got plenty of things in the deck. Um, Despoiler of Souls, Blood Soap Champion, Murderous Cut, and a creature that we have coming up here that help keep things out of our graveyard so that we can cast this guy for as cheaply as possible. And he's awesome. <laughs> I really don't have to go into it too much. A four power guy that always comes back and buffs most of your other creatures is just insane. And we, we I mean, he's obviously a four of. One copy of Sidisi Undead Vizier, the other thing that exploits creatures. I just don't see a reason not to play at least one, possibly two, but I'm trying to keep the curve low of Sidisi right here. Um, just, we, we don't really need the toolbox strategy. You're playing an awful lot of, you know, three and four ofs in the deck, but, end of the day, it's always good to be able to search up anything you want. This, you know, survives combat with a Siege Rhino. That's pretty good. You know, lives to tell the tale and kills it. Death Touch is awesome. So, I just, it's, it's great. And again, whatever you're exploiting will probably come back. So, Sidisi's just... Prime, you gotta have her. And to finish off the creatures, two copies of Gurmag Angler, the best creature type ever, zombie fish. That's 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 great. Um, but Gurmag Angler, the other card that helps keep things out of our graveyard, and very often we can just you know remove the rest of the stuff from our graveyard and be able to play the the one remaining card in it, Risen Executioner, for four mana. That's that's awesome. And we're able to get a five five out of the deal. When we play the Risen Executioner, we get a six six. This this again, this survives combat and kills a Siege Rhino. That's actually pretty important in the format. Um, so I just, again, Gurmag Angler is just insane for a couple of reasons. It's a big body that can end up being very cheap for you and makes Risen Executioner cheaper to play and is buffed by Executioner. So at least two copies of Angler. The card is really good. Just six spells in the deck, and here's some removal mostly. We're playing three copies of Bone Splinters, one copy of Ultimate Price, and one copy of Murderous Cut. Now, I could see taking out a Bone Splinters maybe and adding an Antuco Husk, if that's if that was your preference. But so far, this has worked for me. I like that when we sacrifice a guy, we can, A, get that guy back nine times out of ten, and just kill a freaking guy. That's killing a creature for one mana is great. And especially in this deck where we're able to bring like most of our dudes back somehow. That's just, that's absolutely insane. And Bone Splinters may even be a four of in this deck. Obviously Ultimate Prize is just sort of early game removal for us, which is which is important. And a lot of the decks in the format will play, you know, monocolored creatures that are important. So, still, to this day. <laughs> so Murderous, or Ultimate Prize is still an important card. Murderous Cut helps get things out of our graveyard for Risen Executioner and kills a guy. It's one of the best removal pieces in the format. I don't see why we wouldn't play it here. And for the hell of it, one copy of Cruel Revival in the deck, which is actually really good. <laughs> Cruel Revival is awesome when you can kill one of their dudes and get back usually a Fleshbag Marauder or even a Risen Executioner. There are times where you do that. Um, or any of your other zombies, but mostly it's going to be Fleshbag Marauder because one turn you're going to Cruel Revival a thing at instant speed, and then next turn, it's when you draw your card, untap and draw, play your Fleshbag Marauder, and that, I mean, you've killed two of their dudes, you know? So that can be a really devastating play, Cruel Revival plus Marauder. So I'm actually thinking about upping the the copies, but again, we're trying to keep the curve a little low, although I really love the instant speed on this card. And here are the lands. You know, Mortuary Mire has been actually pretty darn good. Yet another thing that keeps creatures out of our graveyard so that we can play Risen Executioner more easily and helps our resiliency out. Rogue's Pass is just sort of my own personal preference. I love it whenever I'm playing Nantuko Huss, so I'll play a Rogue's Passage. 
And here's the sideboard, you know, mostly against um, other aggro and mid-range decks, we're packing some removal here, but against control we have some stuff, especially if we can stick that palace siege. If we can stick that palace siege, it either clocks them out with the damage and, you know, gain life thing, the drain effect, or we can bring back a creature every turn, which is just as crippling against control, especially considering a lot of our creatures come back anyway, and now we can start getting back fleshbag marauders for when they play their big dragons that we can't target otherwise, so that's pretty cool. Um, helps us get back, like, literally everything, so little cutthroat is important too with Palace Siege. This Palace Siege, when you can resolve it, is an insane card in the late game. And here are our power rankings. A final score of 55, which seems low, but it's just fine, honestly. The deck is fairly competitive because of its high resiliency and its high synergy, you know. The deck has a lot of little synergies going for it, you know, with Risen Executioner and Vis-a-Vis -vis Bloodsoak Champion and Despoiler of Souls, you know. Um, and just, a, it's got a lot going on. Gurmag Angler, you know, being able to get cards out of your graveyard to play Risen Executioner. It all sort of centers around Executioner, and there's a lot of little synergies with um, Zulaport Cutthroat, too, and, and Tuco Hus. So, just a lot of the cards synergize with one another they're making the synergies very, very strong. And its resilience is, is high because we're playing Bloodsoak Champion, Despoiler of Souls, Risen Executioner, so many cards that come back after they die to removal that it's it can really be hard for especially control-based decks to do anything about this. Not to mention that decks that play mass removal, if we've got a Zulaport Cutthroat out, it can sometimes deal three or four damage to them when all of our creatures die. They don't want that either. So we are very strong in some areas against control decks, surprisingly. All that and the deck will only cost you about 20 bucks on TCG Player. Not bad at all. Actually, I think it costs like a little bit less right now on TCG Player, but Bloodsoak Champion is rising pretty fast, so by the time I get this video out, we will have to see. But the deck has been really, really fun. It's awesome playing a bunch of creatures that always come back, you know? And all the other creatures we're playing synergize with those dudes very, very well. So the deck has been much, much better than I thought it would be when I set out to make, you know, just a thematic zombie deck. So try it out at your FNM, see where it takes you. I think it's got a lot of really, really cool things going for it. I'm Dev from SBMTG. I really hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things for us because it helps us out a lot. And we work hard and we love you guys. I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching, my wizards, and happy Halloween.